the philosopher giving a lecture on the orrery um, by Joseph Wright of Derby, who is a artist from England. Uh, and sometimes College Board asks about that, so I wanted you to, to note that he is from England. Uh, I really like this piece. It's dramatic, it's interesting. You know, you, you can't help but kind of be pulled into the art piece because of the dark light contrast. So let's take a look and get into the context here with this piece. Uh, we are in the Enlightenment era with this one, and you know, this is kind of the the middle-ish of the 18th century, so thinking like 1760s here with this one, it's an oil on canvas painting. And the Enlightenment era is about science and rational thinking, and that those things are the way to move society forward and progress. And we're then moving away from focusing on the divine and religion. And that's going to change not only how we look at religion and how we look at the universe, but how we look at ourselves as well and what we focus on, how we advance. So it has a far reaching impact that we'll be exploring with a lot of other art pieces too. And our artist, Joseph Wright uh, of Derby, he was deeply involved in the world of science. He was friends and met often with the members of what's called the Lunar Society of Birmingham. In fact, uh, some say that the man in red, who is the philosopher, is a portrait of a friend of his from that society. And he was also, Derby was also, or Joseph Wright of Derby, was also friends with Charles Darwin's grandfather who was also involved in science. So it's definitely something that the artist embraces. It's not just a um, you know, artist for hire you know, painting this when he has no interest in it. It definitely is something that he is a full believer in, this pursuit of scientific understanding of the world around us. So content here I think is interesting because it reminds me of a piece from our past unit when we were looking in the Baroque period, the Italian Baroque era with Caravaggio and the calling of St. Matthew, where the use of light and dark contrast for drama in that piece or tenebrism was used for like the dramatic story of religious conversion and used you know, in context for the dramatic time period of the Counter-Reformation. But now this light and dark which I would say, say still is tenebrism, is this dramatic kind of exciting, mysterious moment of religious, not religious conversion, but scientific conversion, scientific discovery and mystery, you know, unraveling the secrets. So I think that's why you have this real kind of dark background. And then the light source is a gas lamp that would have been in the orrery. Now an orrery is a mechanical model of the solar system and it will depict the orbits of the planets. In fact, here, this is what an orrery would look like, at least without that kind of gas lamp in it. But you would have that light kind of more of a symbol of the sun. So this is kind of what the people are supposed to be standing around and you'd hand crank it and then the planets would move and orbit around the sun. So the, the light source or that gas lamp, of course, represents the sun, but also represents knowledge. And it is illuminating the two kids, both a girl and a boy, and illuminating partially the faces of the other figures and women, children, men, uh, all here showing the importance of pursuing this for all people. It's not just the elite. It's not just for men. It is for everyone to work to advance yourself and society as a whole. Uh, I'm noticing a little Giotto influence as well. I'm going to see if you can recognize that, and I'll say that in a minute once I get done with the rest. Uh, the scientist, or a.k.a. philosopher, is in red. He is in the upper center of the image. Uh, he's the older man in the image. Now, again, some saying it's a friend of um, our artist, Joseph White, or Wright, 
but others are saying that perhaps it's a portrait of Isaac Newton. And so that hasn't really been determined, but definitely the red is giving this figure authority, giving this figure focus too. And because he's above everyone else, it kind of helps create that authority of knowledge that he has. And then there's a note taker on the left. And again, people think that these are real individuals in this image and that perhaps that was someone, again, the artist knew from the Lunar Society of Birmingham. So, and now going back to Giotto influence here, uh, the figure in the front who's completely silhouetted except for a very small sliver of, of the face has her back turned toward us. And of course she does because there's this fascinating orrery there. So how could you be looking at the viewer when all you'd wanna do is look in at the planets rotating so it's a more naturalistic way to present this exciting story of scientific discovery. Uh, and so that's a quick look there. I would say our function here, I mean, some say portrait, which you definitely could do. Uh, others have said genre scene, a scene of everyday life, which definitely fits as well. Um, for formal quality, I would do value. Value is a reference you know, to light, dark. So you could do the, that the tenebrism here uh, creates that contrasting values, extreme values to create drama. Uh, and then also the light is emphasizing. So emphasis is another formal quality. We're emphasizing the orrery and science and we're emphasizing also the, the joy, the excitement, the drama, the importance of scientific discovery. And again, this is going on in the middle of the 17th century in Europe, this particular painting referencing England, and it's just gonna lead to more and more advancements and, and we will definitely see that in the art coming up here soon.